A teardown time. This is obviously a mouse. It's a Microsoft IntelliMouse. Obviously quite old because it still has the mechanical ball in it and a PS2 connector. Let's uh, tear it apart and uh, see how this thing was built. So a mechanical mouse is a, a model of simplicity. A, a steel ball that's been uh, coated with some rubber. Uh, and as it uh, rolls along the surface, you get the X and the Y encoders. And uh, as you might imagine, the uh, there's a photodiode and a uh, light source. And as the uh, wheel turns, of course, it interrupts the light. Uh, there's actually two uh, diodes here because what you also need to do is figure out whether you're going uh, forwards or backwards. Let's uh, put a scope uh, onto the output of the photodiode and we can sort of show the quadrature encoding uh, which is used to figure out which direction you're going. So I have one scope probe connected to this resistor and that goes into the LED which uh, drives out of course. And if we go over the scope we can see that uh, the mouse is actually producing a, a frequency. It looks like around 5 kilohertz. It doesn't have a constant period. You can see a bit of jitter on it. That surprises me a little bit. On channel 2, let's uh, put the scope probe onto the uh, receiver, one of the uh, receiver sides. Now we can see a, a waveform coming up here. Um, and if I were to slightly rotate the wheel, of course, uh, depending on whether or not I block the LED or not, uh, would of course result in a slightly different pulse. I don't think that's very important though. What uh, it is probably looking at is the two outputs. So I have three signals I want to look at, but only a two channel scope uh, on the bench at the moment. So what you can use is the external uh, triggering output, and I'll put that onto the LED uh, as it dries out, and then use these two channels to look at the two sides of that uh, receiver and see if we can see a pattern in those signals. What I have now is the uh, one probe onto the external trigger and then two onto either side of this receiver, and if we come back to the oscilloscope, we can see two kind of square waves. And as I rotate the, uh, the encoder, actually, I thought it might be quadrature encoding, but it looks like it's actually kind of changing the waveform Sometimes the slope is uh, higher and sometimes the slope is lower. And I guess it must be sensing on, on that principle. So uh, interesting, not quite what I expected. So a single integrated circuit on the package. It's actually marked uh, with uh, the Microsoft logo. Uh, I suspect this is going to be a small microcontroller. Uh, this is a fairly old design, uh, 1990s it looks like. So uh, let's uh, de-encapsulate this and uh, see actually what kind of microcontroller Microsoft decided to use. So once you uh, remove the packaging from the microcontroller, you end up with uh, this small semiconductor that's shown in the slide here. And if you put it in a microscope, you can get a photograph of the uh, silicon die. Uh, the first thing to look for is the uh, manufacturer's mark. In this case, it points me to uh, Sun Plus, uh, which is a semiconductor manufacturer out of uh, Taiwan. And if you look at their website, they look like they specialize in building products for high volume manuf uh, manufacturing, things like stereos and such. Uh, they still actually do list uh, mouse support. Now this particular part number isn't shown on the website because it's a fairly old device, uh, 1999, long obsolete. Uh, but if you Google around a little bit, it seems to start matching up with a data sheet called the SPMC01A. And uh, that uh, data sheet indicates that there would be a 64 bytes of uh, RAM. And if you were to uh, work around the chip, you can see this portion of the array here uh, is a pattern of 64 uh, times 8 elements, which of course matches 64 uh, bytes of ROM. And that'd be very appropriate for a uh, microcontroller application like a mouse. You uh, clearly want to limit your resources because uh, every time you add in things like RAM, it increases your silicon die area, which of course increases costs, which is uh, not good in the mass market. Uh, there's uh, two and a half kilobytes of ROM according to the data sheet, and that also does match up with this array over here. So. There seems to be some consistency, uh, so builds my confidence. I am looking at probably, if not the data sheet, something that's relatively close to it. Uh, the product is an 8-bit uh, CPU, and the CPU core is probably in this region here. Uh, the blacker dots is basically the register set, and uh, that would imply that the elements highlighted here must be the uh, peripherals. So going further in the data sheet, I can see there's a, a pad assignment. Uh, this particular controller sold bare die, and uh, so of course you have to indicate where the pads are. Uh, now if I take that uh, diagram and match it up with my photograph, there's further correlation. So it builds some confidence that uh, I might be looking at the SPMC-01A, uh, or this particular die is maybe an earlier version of it. Uh, unusually in this die, normally you only see I.O. pads in the so-called I.O. ring, which is the outside of a, a silicon die. Uh, but in this case you can see there's actually logic that creeps into the area, which would be traditionally reserved for that uh, function, um, and that's because they don't have a lot of I.O. pads, and uh, they're trying to balance out the I.O. ring with the actual logic, so they actually can maximize their, their die area. So there you go, a, a very typical controller that you would expect in a mouse. Uh, as always, I have uh, detailed photographs of these uh, silicon dies in my blog, Electron Update, 
www.blogspot.com if you'd like to uh, take a closer look at them and uh, study some of the features. Uh, after a mechanical mice, of course, uh, the mouses became uh, optically based. They take small photographs of uh, the surface of your desk and they do some really cool uh, signal processing to figure out the uh, motion of the mouse. Uh, if you want to take a look at one of those and what the control looks there, uh, I have uh, tore down an optical mouse previously and you can uh, find that on my YouTube channel and also on my blog some uh, detailed photographs of how sophisticated they became after this era.